attempt number nine. nine. Nine, which is the nine third is three. the third, <laughs> the third third times the charm. And this is the third time I've said the third third time because six was also six was the second third third time. Fifth, five was the first third third time, and this so is the, the th third 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 time. So the third 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 time. The t yes, it fucking is the third 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 times the charm. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! Bam. Attempt number nine, here we are. And my first click was a misclick, we're off to a great start. Although... Yeah, they are way more uh, <clears throat> forgiving with clicking on the ring than they are with clicking on right? the coin. Going to the bookstore. I hate that I can't filter through my uh, clicks while he's doing this. Yeah. Do 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 do. Old lamps for new. Oh, Shamir Shamazel. Oh, fuck. I thought there was one more dialogue box. Bring this home. God damn it! <sighs> like fifth time. Oh fuck. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Motherfucker. I guess it's just things surrounding the fairy man are uh Yeah, this whole tricky. thing is just off. You know what that music kind of sounds like, but it clearly isn't because this predates it by a goddamn while? Mm -hmm. Is the, uh, if I touch a burning candle, I will feel no pain. Oh, uh, from, from Corpse Bride. Bride. Uh, like, the, the tune, it just reminds me of that. I'm sure I completely botched it while singing it, because I, I, I'm not technically tone deaf, but I'm not good. Ah, yes, in the cutscene. But it's okay, because you're the only person who's seen Corpse Bride. Um, so good. I mean, that's, there are only four songs in it, and that's the third, that's ranked third in my book. Because the wedding song, while fine, is nothing special. And the, uh, the other two songs are just fantastic. Okay, don't let me forget the mint or the invisible ink. Nightingale, bam. Mint. Mint, motherfucker. Okay, I just lost some time there. What am I at? Like 250? <clears throat> 237. Oh, okay, so... Oh, but I gotta go back. I almost forgot and just blew off the island. What are we at now? 255. Fuck, see? That that last bit there takes longer because there's just a couple animations, so it's... I'm trying to get off the island in three minutes. That was my goal, and I haven't made it happen yet. I've come close. You've gotten closer than this, but... Yeah, I, I think, what, three minutes, four seconds was my fastest. And I count it once I'm done apparating here, so... What are we at, like 320? We are at... Uh, 324. Yeah, so that's... I think the slowest I've done it. So I was going over to the other tab because I was prepping for the um Oh right. For the Eclipse of Logic, but I guess we don't need those yet because we Yeah yeah I forgot we hadn't done the gnome guards yet in this run. We we've uh, on the ninth attempt you start to lose track of what you have and my, haven't done. My brain is actively leaking out of my ears and also what just happened to the screen? What, did something happen? It, it's a different aspect ratio than it was a second ago. Wait, what? I mi I I didn't even notice. Well, I'm not sure if that'll transfer uh Transfer the recording anyway, so. So we might be talking nonsense. Yeah. I just hope that doesn't mean it stopped recording. That would be bad. There's no way to, like, pause and check, is there? I mean, not without resetting. Not without having to reset everything. Yeah. Cool. So, we're just gonna pray that it's still recording or that I die. If I die, we will check. 
Ears, 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 ears. Okay, ears. Oh, fuck. I let the mouse wander up to the top of the screen and stalled it for a second. Taste buds. Doesn't he taste my hand holding it? You would think. I also hate that the mint leaf doesn't work. Like, that's some bullshit. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Like, if you do the... He knows, like, the processed mint that is the only one that works. Unprocessed, and it's like, no, sorry. No, fuck! I forgot I'm not supposed to do this yet. Okay, that was a waste of like five seconds. Uh, gotta go back for the flute. But I remembered my mistake in time. It's like here -ish. Really? Because I love it. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I don't think I deserve nice things. To clarify for the audience, if we say random things like that, it usually means that's what the character was saying in that scene. <laughs> yes, we're usually referencing things. Not always, but like... More to... What the fuck? Oh, fucker. Um, yeah, I would like a rundown in the comments. How many of you... Is this, like, your first time watching King's Quest VI be played? Please. Yes, we would love to know. How many of you are fuck. using... Fuck. I just wasted, <laughs> like, eight seconds. Not... Oh, no, actually, maybe that many. I... Pro maybe ten. That was... I just wasted a lot of time by misclicking that shit. What are we at? Uh, seven minutes and fourteen seconds. God damn. Okay. Actually, don't even know if that's good or bad. I'm just assuming it's bad because I haven't been quite on my game. This is the ninth attempt, right? Is it? It's gotta be. <laughs> gotta switch to audio here. Because there's a glitch we found. Flute on the flowers, motherfucker! Just enjoy the sweet soundtrack for a second. Coming up on the end here. Getting rid of that nonsense. So it, okay, it's not actually definitively confirmed that it's faster with text. Like it might be just as easy to skip through things with the voices. But for me it's easier because when I start to hear the voices, I want to hear the audio clip. So when I see the text, that's something annoying that imposes on my gameplay. So it's easy for me to instinctively click through it. Whereas, it's not instinctive for me to click through the audio. So, that's why we're doing it on text. When I first timed out the run, I was under the impression that I could skip faster on text. And that might be true, but it also might not. Um, there are some... The thing about the text is it does... Uh... Where am I going? Isle of the Beast? Yes. Okay. Because you got the...
Yeah, the, uh... With the audio, you have to wait between... There's a gap between the dialogues as it loads. And with the text, it just automatically loads the next text when there's multiple text. So I do think in that regard, it's probably a little faster. Um, but really, it's more about my own mentality and keeping me my head in the game. Although clearly, I'm not totally in the game because I keep fucking up simple shit like... What cursor am I trying to use? So we're just a little over 10 minutes in. Okay. Then after this, it's back for the Tinder box, right? Yes. And then the Cliffs of Logic. Yes. Okay. I feel like a couple runs ago, I was finding a nice sweet spot with the precision of the mouse movement, and it's starting to, it's starting to go. I'm losing that. Tinderbox, tinderbox, bottom tinderbox, right, bottom right, bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. I gotta click the bottom right. Where the fuck is it? The flute. Bam. Bam. Do 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 do. The game really does create the need to keep coming back to this island when there shouldn't be a need. <laughs> All right, Cliffs of Logic, let's do this. It, it does, again, it's nice to have like a home island. When you're not trying to speed run it, when you're playing yeah. the game properly, it's not bad, because especially when you it, it, haven't it, beat it yet, a lot of the game is going from island to island, seeing if you missed something, it's, trying it's to solve the puzzles. So there's a sense of... You're gonna be back at the Isle of the Crown anyway. It's not like, it's not like you weren't going back there to look at shit. So it's not as much of an inconvenience to like, go back and try to do it. Okay, so for this one, mm -hmm. the uh, what are they? It's a uh, diagonal guy, Fu Manchu face, tennis court, and bird. right diagonal guy, mustache, tennis court, and bird. Yep. Cool. And then for the next symbols one, it's going to be the uh, face, mm -hmm. the caterpillar, the castle, and uh, the N. Yes, and the letter N. <clears throat> A really botched N. Cliffs of, Cliffs of Logic are brought to you by the letter N. Cliffs of Logic are brought I can to count you the, the children's television workshop. I can count a purple backwards. Peasant's Quest. Yeah. Even though that wasn't a parody of this era of Sierra games. It was a parody of this franchise. The youngest, the oldest, and the second son. Third from the left and down you go. There's a whole poem that's supposed to teach you the correct solution to that one. I only remember the two lines that are... Necessary. Yeah. That are actual, like, clues. It's an entire poem built around... That was a weird step. Embedding these two helpful lines. So third from the left and down you go means if you click the third circle, mm -hmm. the stair beneath you disappears and you fall to your death. It's just a cruel way to kill you for no reason. It's kind of funny, though. Yeah. King's Quest is great at those cruel... Oh, shit, I'm too far away. Good. For a second, I thought he was going to reach for it and fall. Okay, so it's this one, yeah. this one, this one, and this one. Yes. Awesome. And then ascend, and then just don't miss, and I hope the glitch doesn't happen. At the top of the cliffs, there's some fucking glitch where you can click on the step mm -hmm. to go back down, and what happens is you stand in midair and don't fall, but the next time you try to walk anywhere, you fall. I'd also like to point out that the Space Quest games had even crueler deaths, but they were even funnier to make up for it. I played the first one, but never beat it, because I couldn't find the space suit. 
Like, somewhere you're supposed to get a space suit. And that's something that fucks you up, like, way at the end of the game. Like, there's a space it's, suit you need to get way at the beginning, and you can make it, like, 90% of the way through the game. And that's what happened to me. I got to the point where it's like, I got out of the spaceship to jump to the other spaceship, but didn't have a spacesuit and died. And it was just like, I was stuck there with nothing, and... But also, like, when you have the spacesuit, like, it's not like your character changes at all. Like, the visually? Yeah. So... So all of the, uh... The visuals, if you've seen other people play, there's no indication that you need the spacesuit. Come on, don't fuck it up at this point. The visual that sticks with me from the first space quest is there's a cantina that's, you know, parody of Moss Eisley. But sometimes when you go in it, uh, on the stage is like... Mm -hmm. A figure and Dan, you know, modal nodes look alike. But sometimes it's a Blues Brothers on the stage there. And that's just one of those wacky Sierra reference jokes. For me, it's the spider image, because in the Space Quest uh, commercial, good, no glitch, uh, they show you walking and then the spider following you. And oh, yeah. I used to have an intense fear of spiders. I still hate spiders and don't like them, and they creep me out. But I no longer will run screaming from the room when I see one. I used to, like, run screaming from the room when I saw a spider. And, uh, so seeing... The so it, it stands to reason that that would be what stuck with you from the demo. Hope. Yeah. I should replay the Space Quest games. I never played them as much as I played the King's Quest games. Oh, I guess I didn't just play the first one, because we had uh, the... What was it? The 12th one? The 8th one? The 6th one? It was... I think it was the 4th one, but the thing is it's a time travel one, so, like, at the beginning of it, you're trapped in, like, Space Quest 12. Oh, fucker. Oh, it's, there it is. Okay, I was looking in the wrong spot. You are 16 minutes and 23 seconds into this... Playthrough. I don't know. I mean, I'm basically, until we get closer to the end, I'm not, not going to know what that means yeah. because I just know I haven't been doing great. Oh, fuck. Like, I don't actually know. I think you're only a minute or so behind your the one other time you got this far. So maybe if I can make up some time. But, uh... <clears throat> Okay, get the labyrinth shit ready. Oh yeah, we drew a lap, or Nick drew a map of the labyrinth. Yep, because that's how you save time. So much cutscene. See, okay, this is like the cutscene from King's Quest V with the Yeti. Where you have, like, the Wicked Witch, uh, or no, like, the White Witch and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Um, or the Ice Queen. Except the gameplay in that is one click. It's the fucking pie on the Yeti's face. Yeah. Whereas here, you have an entire labyrinth between the two things. But, yeah, like, it's the similar story beat of, like, here's this royalty. Like, you trespassed. Like, now defeat the beast in a way that will kill you and is basically an execution. And then you go back to the previous throne room yeah. scene. Like, the parallels are striking. Okay, don't misclick here. Somehow, one, I two, of that. three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, now I'm going forward. Get the shield. Get your shield. Nope, that's not what I want. Go forward. Go forward. Go to the right. To the right. See, this isn't as exciting as most uh, playthrough, like speed runs, because it's still not fast. It's still, <laughs> and it's not, it's not a dexter. It's not like a showing off of dexterity or anything like that. Okay, where am I? I'm here. So up, up, over. It's still beating puzzles and like. That kind of thing, but without the part that makes beating puzzles cool. <laughs> Basically, I'm explaining why y'all are fools for watching this video. <laughs> explaining the whole meta joke behind doing this. Behind speedrunning a game that Yes, is... let's call it a meta joke and not a mistake. I prefer that. That's a better, a better idea. <laughs> the whole prank behind this video. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Okay, so not the first time I can go down, but the second time I can go down. 
first time will kill me. That's a death trap, don't go down. The second time will free me. Well, not directly, but you know. I think it should be to the right here, yep. And this is why we need that goddamn hole in the wall. <sighs> hole, meet wall. Well, that's creepy as hell. Mm -hmm. See, there are some items that even though you don't uh, use them to, you don't uh, spend them, what's the word, use to exhaust it, deplete mm -hmm. them. You don't deplete mm -hmm. them when you use them, you still lose them. Like the, the hole in the wall that crawls away. That you neither deplete them nor give them to somebody. But I've they, been they not on the, uh, I never switched to the next, wait, all oh, right, I'm down here. Okay. You're, uh, I think you're still going the right way. No, I am, I just, uh, I realized I was still looking at the other map. I, I, cause I did that first part from memory. So. And this was also, before we figured out how to get the hole in the wall, we just, we sort of mapped out, okay, so what's on the other side of that wall? Well, and because Ben, your friend who also played the game, the yeah. only other person we knew who ever played this game, told us, oh, the hole in the wall, and then the Minotaur, and stuff, and so, like, gave us a sense of what plays out, but we thought, well, how do we do that without the hole in the wall? Yeah, how, how, what, what's the alternate solution? And there is none, but... And so if you don't have the hole in the wall, what happens is the Minotaur just kills you in that room where you're supposed to use the hole in the wall. So the death does not help you figure out how to not get killed. Usually deaths in King's Quest will like, there'll be a lot, you'll die and you'll learn, oh, I don't want to die next time, so logically, how do I not die? The one hint you get from the death narration was, if only Alexander could have seen what was coming, which got us thinking, okay, so narratively, that doesn't track, but like, gameplay-wise, okay, if we could see what's on the other side of the wall, we're safe. But, but like, we didn't even come to that, because it was like, in our minds, we were like, well, what if we get more invisible ink so that he doesn't see us? Because like, we didn't realize I, he just doesn't show up. I was also thinking, though, like, I mean, we thought it was weird that, like, if you go in there without the hole in the wall, it's just cutscene. Like, you can't right? Really there's no, yeah, because we had the red sash, and we're like, why won't it let us use the? This is part of what was so stupid about that death, is um, they should have just let you be trapped in there. They shouldn't have killed you there. Killing you there was misleading. Well, killing you there is just so you know that that room is important. But, like, I, I was thinking, we were thinking both, how do you disguise yourself in the Invisible Ink? Oh, wait, shit, where am I going? Where am I going? Uh... Back to the Isle of, uh, back to the Isle of Crown, right? No, I'm going to the Isle of Mist. Isle of Mist. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, Mist. To get the sickle. Mist to get the sickle, then Beast. Right. Isle of Mist, which didn't exist a minute ago. No. Um, um, I guess technically it existed, but we the, definitely didn't have it. Fuck, because I was just talking about... Oh, yeah, I was also, because I also thought as a kid... Okay, if we could keep the invisible ink, what if we could splash that on the wall to see through it? Right. Okay, so I, we, yeah. I was thinking also we could use it and he wouldn't see us and he wouldn't kill us and like, but we were very, like, the fact that he doesn't show up, Beast, Yes. is bullshit because we're still talking about the level. <laughs> Because it, it's mis it, it throws you off the scent. It doesn't help you acquire the scent. They should have just let you be trapped. Or he should have killed you in the, the room with the with the tapestry. the tapestry. Although, even that would have been like, I have the sash, why can't I use the sash? It should have been, you could have used the sash... But he just kept coming at you and eventually killed you. But but the fact is that the scene starts with, like, Alexander hears it right on the other side of the east wall. So we spent time tracking, okay, what's right on the other side of the east wall? Yep. And it was the fucking tapestry room, and we were like, well, this is nothing. Yep. Um, we didn't, and so we didn't realize that the key was we're supposed to see the secret passage. Something else we need to make clear. If you clicked on the tapestry without having seen the beast go, or the, uh, the minotaur go yeah. through... You looked behind it, but didn't feel behind it, so you couldn't open the secret passage. Yeah, there are things that there are things in this you can't speedrun. Like the thing about speedruns, 
of narrative games is it's all about the fact that you know more than the player character does. And there are some things the game will not allow Alexander to know without learning about it. Right. Okay, I gotta get the Nightingale, right? When I'm on my yes. way to get her. Yes. You are... <laughs> we have not talked at all about what the fuck is going on with the beast. So there's a Beauty and the Beast sequence. God damn it, I keep hitting that fucking sickle. And I still have not figured out if the Beauty and the Beast sequence... If they put it in because Robbie Benson is the voice, or if that was always going to be there, or if Robbie Benson is the voice because there's a Beauty and the Beast sequence, yeah, um, or or fuck, there we go, or if it's just a coincidence because they're both popular at in 1992, right? Uh, Nightingale. Like I have no doubt that Robbie Benson is in this game because he was in Beauty and the Beast. But the fact that Beauty and the Beast are also in this game might be immaterial. Yeah, that might be just a coincidence. It works out nicely. Yep. Not my ring. I would love to trade this for my ring and just be like, fuck off, Beast, I got my ring back. I can't remember, like, it might say Alexander doesn't want to get rid of uh, the Beast ring or else he'll... That's entirely possible. They often oh, just don't let you do stupid things. Sometimes they encourage you to do stupid things for comedic effect. Other times they don't let you. What's my time at? Uh, 25 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, okay, so maybe it's... You might be able to get this. The goal, I want to do it in under 35. So you have nine. You have about nine minutes left to reach that goal. Yeah, and um, I mean, I'm, I just got to blitz the castle now. And have not fun fuck up. the castle. Okay, let's do this. Oh, fuck, I was on the right one. <laughs> it's okay. Only lost a second or two. I hate that I have to click it twice, because crossing that is a move in and of itself. Oh, yeah. That's annoying. But I figured out that I have to do that while while doing this speed run, so I've I been do, preparing for it. I do like the animation of that move, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got... Okay, foot, foot, there we go. We are so close here. Knock on wood. Good thing the mic's not on here. That would sound like awful <laughs> every time. It's like, knock on wood. Bam, bam, bam! The audio on this is already going to be not great. <laughs> yeah. Come on, fucker. I want you to walk in here. Stop staring at the pretty girls. You're here to win your woman back. Stop getting distracted. Stop staring at the pretty girls and become one. <laughs> In the 90s, cross-dressing was the height of comedy. I'm only slightly exaggerating, because this would have been like six years before, you know, uh, John Peters insisted on Kevin Klein cross-dressing in the Wild Wild West movie. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. The whole movie. <laughs> you know, but the, the, I forgot that sequence. I saw that movie once, and I guess I'm glad I saw it, because... I can attest that it's real, but god damn, at what price? And then, I watched the pilot of the original TV series, I've never seen... Yes, I watched the first maybe two episodes. It, uh, it has not aged well. But it's not aged worse than the movie. <laughs> no, no, no. And it, it, it's, the ways it hasn't aged well are different from the ways yeah. the movie hasn't aged well. Because the show hasn't aged well because it was trying to be slow enough for the audience to keep up. So, like, in Wait. the end of the pilot, there's this move where there's a, a... Hang on a sec. Oh, fuck. There, there's a... Ball. What is it? It's a pool. A pool cue. Yeah. That, um... A pool cue ball. That's a bomb. Mm -hmm. And they remind you of it like 30 times in close-ups that it's a bomb before mm -hmm. the move happens where, like, they use it as a bomb. So it's not just... Yes! I was worried I accidentally clicked the thing and was going to hang it back up. It's not just Chekhov's gun. It's Chekhov's, like, really brandishing his gun. Yeah. Chekhov's gun show. <laughs> I like that. I'm still not sure a nail could do this, although I suppose that's a big-ass lock, so maybe. Okay, now we gotta give the knife to Kasima. Fucker, go around the... <laughs> okay, if this is your first exposure to King's Quest VI, like, 
if you've never played the game or watched another playthrough, or even watched my obsession of the moment on it, I want you to, in the comments, based on the moves you are doing, explain what you think the story of East West <laughs> 6 is. Yeah, Explain yeah. what you think we're doing narratively with, with each move Nick makes here. So something that you guys probably don't care about, but I'm gonna explain anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, when trying to blitz through this, I right click while uh, stuff is happening so that, because I'm going to click after it's done and I don't want to accidentally do something after it's done. That's literally what got me killed here uh, last time I made it this far, was I was trying to blitz through the dialogue that's about to happen, but I was left clicking and I clicked one too many times and instead of right here doing this and showing him the thing, I accidentally tried to run past him, and he stabbed me. So, that's why I have... But the thing is, right-clicking changes the cursor. So, like, right there, where I did it too many times, and it was no longer on the cursor I needed, that's why I was left-clicking last time. Okay, what's my time at? Uh, 30 minutes and 38 seconds. Oh! This, this, we're, we're I'm on the home the stretch. We are down to the I, wire. Oh, I don't want to jinx this shit, but oh my god. Okay. I gotta give him the mint. Don't let me forget to give him the mint. I don't want to die because I didn't do the mint. Right. And I have the mint. Because we did the cave. And I got the mint. Give him the mint. Uh, okay. It wasn't letting me yet. <laughs> Okay. I think you're gonna do this. I swear, if the recording fucked up on this one, I'm gonna be sick. That'll be- oh yeah, we weren't sure about that. Okay, so... Uh, fuck? There we go. You only have to click two more times. What's my time? You are at 31 minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, you got this. Yeah, it's, no. it's not going to take you three at minutes. At this point. Well, you got this to the final clip. You might click. You might not have it at yeah. the end of the last cutscene, but... What? Do you want me to hit laugh uh, on the click or once it goes to the portrait of you kissing her? Once it goes to the portrait of kissing. Okay. Or both. I mean, you can keep hitting lap, right? Yeah, that's true. So does he just kill you there if you didn't give her that thing? I think so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you just beat the game. Okay, so what time am I at? Uh, you're at about... It was about 32 minutes and 35 seconds. I was a little slow on the lap button. No, that's fine. 32. Okay, so... Uh, and now we're gonna blitz And the now, game. yeah. And now it was another eight seconds before that. And now uh, I'll just hit stop. No, yeah, yeah, hit stop yeah. once the credits start. Yeah. Because uh, I'm curious as to... As to what the actual start to finish time is. Right. <laughs> I don't know when the text is going to come up, so at this point I'm just... I like how he's laying on this button. <laughs> Al Hazard's just kind of strolling. It's like, well, guess I'll die. Like, well, I'm caught. What's the point? Well, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> I was bested by this asshole. I mean, is there really a point in fighting anymore? I always miss the one week later. I forgot this isn't like immediately they go downstairs and are just married now. Hey, Jalo's here. Also, when I did the 28 minute one or 28 and a half minute like time, it was just to the last click. And that was that was what the time was. So it was from the first, like... First click to last click, they or b before the first. The click, final you know? cutscene basically serves as a "Where are they now?" <laughs> kinda, and and it only really changes. I mean, there are a million little variations based on other things you might have done, like well, the islands are still feuding, or well, the islands are at peace now, or mm -hmm. well, the ferry's fixed. Okay. What are we looking at? Thirty-four minutes. Boom! <laughs> ah! Wow. Okay. I really hope that recorded. <laughs>
So what are your thoughts now that you have uh, basically breezed past everything that makes the best King's Quest game the best King's Quest game? Fuck, that took nine tries. Uh, well, Alexander has experience with cats, so, you know, this was his ninth life. There you go. I do like this song. It's not deep or, it's you know, it's complex. Che it's cheesy as hell, but it's perfect for yeah, the game. Yeah, tonally, it's like... Oh, let's let's see how many of the screens we never Girl encounter. In the tower. I think we've seen them all. Okay, never got here. Oh yeah, I I didn't even realize it showed you a screen from the Isle of De or from the Realm of the Dead in the credits. Here it's like because oh yeah, these are the background mats, so it uh yeah. doesn't have any of the items. So like no eyes on the clan. Oh yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, nothing that animates. Never oh. went to this screen. Yeah, we never... This is on uh, the Isle of Mists. It's, yeah. uh... If... Actually... Mm, do you have to get caught to go there? Uh, you can just walk up there. Okay. But you will get caught when you go right, there. Right, right, okay. That's, but that's not only available to you if you, uh... Get captured. When you go back to the Isle of Mists the second time, you get captured. And if you have the spell book, you're able to cast a spell and, like... Do shit, but uh, if, if gonna... you don't, it's a cutscene and you die. I wonder if they're gonna show any of the dungeon. Boom! That's Love that frame. One. That's a good one. Yeah, the lo the Lord of the Dead himself. Yep. It's got kind of a Jacob Marley thing going. With the chains. Yeah. So. Less of a Robert Marley. Yeah. Never oh, got here. Yeah, that that's in the in the. This is where all the shit was hiding. Castle dungeon. I'm sure this is so entertaining for the people watching it. Uh, well, us just talking. I also realized I left the mouse right in the center that whole time, yeah, so that's annoying. It's covering up text. Well, and it's also just there. Like, that's that's going to bother me. <laughs> Apparently that sword is just part of the background. That's weird, because you can pick it up. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how that tracks. And, unless the lack of sword is like a sprite that's that goes possible. over. No, that's entirely possible. It's amazing how much of the shit you have to do in this game for the spells. Like, yeah, like of the extra shit, the percentage of it that is just to get ingredients for spells is insane. Is, okay, is Isle of the Beast the island with the least optional things? Because it's the most streamlined path. Like, the lamp is the only optional thing. The lamp is the only optional thing. There are things you get that you don't necessarily need, but you have to get them narrative. You know what? Oh, yep. Another one. I lied. Uh, you can get a second rose. That's optional. Oh, can you? Yeah, because you can send the rose to... Uh, oh, to Kasima. You Kusima. can. I forgot about that. Didn't we just watch the credits? Let's watch them again. <laughs> Alternate take. Now we don't have to now we can talk. Okay, so what did we learn? Um, that it's possible to beat in 35 minutes, even with the slower speed. And it's actually possible to beat. It's not just uh, theoretically possible, but like I have now beaten it in less than 35. What did it come out to? Like, even it, with the end scene? It, it was like 30, uh, yeah, 34 minutes. That's all, yeah. It, it was, now the question only remains, is it possible to beat it on your first try in under 35 minutes? No, because you wouldn't know what the hell you were doing. Oh, you mean I, I don't mean first speed run yeah. attempt. Yes, I don't mean gotcha. the first time ever played. Sorry, right? that's that's what I thought you no, meant. No, and I'm like, no. you just are the luckiest goddamn person ever because okay. you don't know any of the story and you're just clicking items on things and nailing it. Well, they and you say, just know what everything you need. They say an infinite number of monkeys and an infinite number of computers can eventually speed run King's Quest Six on the first try. <laughs> of course, to monkeys, they they don't read. So, every time would be like, just blind to speed running it. Um, but yeah, if, if uh, on your first speed run attempt, could you do this? And probably if you had the game completely memorized. Yeah. And Well, and like, without help, could you, without someone yeah. there like, alright, this is what you got next, like... I think if you had spent like the week leading up to this playing through if, the game every day. If I'd been training for this, then I, I could. Maybe not on the first try. If you, like, had, if you had gone to the King's Quest gym and really gotten King's Quest swole. I think there are enough. <laughs> I 
think there are enough um, glitches that you in like ways that even if you know what you're doing, you can just accidentally die. That doing it on your first time would be incredible. Well, okay, so glitch. And by that, I, I mean first attempt of the day. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's basically what I'm thinking. Like, so the glitches we can point to the two glitches that uh, were relevant to us. Were relevant to you. One. This didn't fuck you over at all on a speed run, but you just had to prepare for the flute on the flowers glitch. Yes, during the training, that that was like a while yeah. trying to figure out what was wrong with that. We, we were like, "What are we missing? This is how you solve this puzzle." What are we, we, we had to we had to restart the emulator twice. But the glitch that kept fucking you over on speed runs was that stepping wrong on the stone. Glitch. Yes, that bothered the hell out of me because it's like at that point you're like, "Well, what do I do? There's no way to get out of this." I really like this room. Partially because this is one that there's another, there is a poem that goes with this room. Yeah, that, that's uh, how you solve it. Something about three roses, and I don't know. The point is, you're supposed to have that. We did it the first time playing. It was me and my friend Tessa. We got to that room, and we were just, just like... trial and error. We saved it, and literally just trialed and errored our way through it until we found the pattern. Um, and then when we found the, uh, the instruction manual, because we didn't know where it was. It was somewhere in our house. Yeah. But apparently we beat the Cliffs of Logic. It might have gotten lost between those two things. Maybe but that's, some of the uh, clips of logic, I think we guessed our way through. But uh, yeah, or we may, we might have written down the I clips of logic and then lost the manual. I can't remember our previous all every detail from our early gameplay attempts. It's also but, possible that we had the manual and just didn't know to check. That's also possible. Um, but there definitely was a time where we lost the manual, and I yeah. remember this because so okay. Our first exposure to King's Quest was um, we got a computer as a hand-me-down from from some cousins. Yeah, they it had the King's Quest collection, the at the time complete King's Quest collection, which was one through six, and a preview of seven, and a preview of seven. At, at, at the not at the time we acquired it, that was not no. complete, but at the at the time of the collection, that was complete. Um, and so that came with the computer we got, and so. The instruction manual, like, they had actually figured out some of the solutions and penciled it in in the instruction manual that we didn't, uh, know to do. And, um, anyway, so when we found the manual again, we're like, oh, they solved this. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. For the, so for the Roses thing, it was literally like, there was the poem, and then next to it, they had written in the pattern, and I was like, huh, well... We got there on our own. But the but, reason you know. I know for a fact that we had misplaced the manual <laughs> is because for King's Quest IV, rather than work copy protection into the game, you had to do it before starting, and it was it was like this whole, like, before you start this game, what is the third word of the sixth paragraph on the twelfth page right. of the manual? And because it was no longer that. the original King's Quest IV manual, all collection manuals just said, here, here's all the words they're looking for. But since we couldn't find that, if we wanted to play King's Quest 4, we just had to guess, like, Crown. And that was every time you played. I forgot about that. And yeah. you knew one of them was Daventry, one of them was Crown. Yeah. So we'd pick a word and just keep guessing. Keep trying it until it worked. And uh, we got it in sometimes. But it was rare. We also had a glitch on that computer eventually where King's Quest 5, like... The audio didn't work. The audio. I think it was, like, the music was too loud and... Uh, it drowned out the dialogue, and then there was just, like, audio glitches, so... And there was no text option in King's Quest yeah, V. In the days of King's Quest V, there was the floppy disk option, which was all text, and the floppy disk version was all text. The CD version was all speech. King's Quest VI, they learned from their mistakes and was like, okay, we'll let people choose which one they're doing. To the point where that collection came with the French text version of King's Quest V, and you were in, like, you were going into seventh grade at one point. Yep. And you were like, I'm going to take French class so I can play King's That was a Spanish. joke. I was taking French because you were taking Spanish. No, Those were the I know. Options. But you had in your head, maybe once I know French. I also had in my head, maybe once I know French, I can go to France and flirt with French girls and be the cute American who knows French. Neither of those things happened. I still yeah. don't know how to play King's Quest V in French. Never been to France, and if I did, I'd look like an idiot, because I don't speak French. <laughs> I remember more Latin than I remember of French. And I only took one year of Latin. That's a lie. I took, I took Latin one twice. Once senior year of high school, once freshman year of college. The point, though, is that... Um, Four years of French. King's Quest VI. I talked in the obsession about how King's Quest VI fixed every problem with King's Quest V, but I forgot to mention 
that like the option to choose between speech and text was one of the problems they fixed for King's yes. Quest Six. Also, the talk bubble in King's Quest Five is the head of Graham with the speech bubble, and it's yeah. really awkward to try to click it on stuff. And as much as I had trouble specifically talking to the ferryman in this, I at least knew what part of the speech bubble I was supposed to click on him. It's intuitive, because when it's just the speech bubble, you got that point. Uh -huh. So it's like you got to line the point up with them. Um, whereas with the King's Quest V, it was... Not as intuitive. But also, King's Quest VI is just the one where it's more pleasant to listen to the speech, because the voice acting is better. They're actual voice actors, and the dialogue is better. And again, no disrespect intended to the hardworking Sierra employees who were thrust in front of microphones. King's Quest, King's Quest V was groundbreaking, and everyone did everything they could to make it the best game it could be. King I do not believe, at the time, it could have been a better game. King's, Quest, King's Quest V was experimental. Right. And if they had put more time and money in the voice acting, in the scripting of the dialogue, it would have taken away from the time they spent on other things. And for as much as the design of King's Quest V is flawed, I don't remember it being glitchy. I don't remember there being... Pro I mean, other than, other than that audio glitch. That audio thing. Which but that probably had more to do with our computer. At right, the time and that was a permanent else. thing. That wasn't like, well, sometimes the audio... That was like, no, the audio isn't loading for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um... So that might have been a problem with, like, the install or something. But, uh... Yeah. I mean, King's Quest V just needed a, a ground-up redesign just for accessibility. Like, like just just for... J just for intuitiveness. Like, like I'm, not, I'm not saying the game is too hard. I'm saying the game is unintuitive. And the true... Yeah, no, that's actually really true. And honestly, the biggest thing... So King's Quest V, most of the redesigns it needed couldn't be fixed. Mm -hmm. Because... They needed to happen at the beginning. Yeah. And so, like, starting from scratch. The fact that every item can only be used once greatly simplifies the programming. Mm -hmm. So, I get why for this experimental one, they're like, we can't fuck around with alternate, you know, things. Because that's just too hard to program in this new, you know, fangled with these paintings, with these voice dialogue boxes. The only thing that, like, really could have been fixed at the point at some point in the middle of programming was the voiceover and scripting of the dialogue. And probably by that time, they ran out of time and money. Mm -hmm. Like, that that takes time and money to do that. And most likely, by the time they got there, they're like, no, we can't afford to hire voice actors. And I wonder write if... The dialogue. I wonder if uh, originally they were thinking... Like, I wonder if even some of the employees who were doing the voices were thinking, okay, this is just scratch track until we hire an actor. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like that might have even been what it was, and they just were like, well, we can't actually hire actors. Like, I mean, they might have known the whole time. We're speculating. Yeah. We don't know. I don't know. That Nobody's really written, as far as I know, nobody's really written an in-depth history of what went wrong with King's Quest V. And it's still, like... It was a successful game. It was successful enough to land them King's Quest VI. What makes King's Quest VI so magical to me is how, odd, like, basically, so you just attempted something and took nine tries to do it. King's Quest VI is basically their second try. Yeah. Like, for, for all intents and purposes, like, obviously they're building on everything they learned from the first four games, too. But so was I when playing it. Yeah. <laughs> But, but they're kind of starting over from scratch in how to make a King's Quest game in King's Quest V. Yeah. The entire interface is different. Like, a lot of the concepts are similar, because you have an inventory and you use mm -hmm. items on things, but there, the there's entire fairy tale interface puzzles. Yeah. is different. And just the scope of the game. Like, King's Quest IV, you started to get to a comparable scope, but still nothing nearly as big... King's Quest IV is still a lot more um, going around in circles in the same land than King's Quest V is. Yeah, it King's Quest I is very sandbox. You've got the different areas that have the different things you need. But it's mostly just wandering around. It's not like you have to do them in any particular order. You have to get certain items before you do certain tasks, but most of the tasks are interchangeable. And it... Um, um, so, like, it, it got that down in terms of the mechanics. Yeah. Can it, King's Quest 2 is more linear, but it's still largely the same space you're going back and forth. Right. In. And then it has the ending. So the the and also King's Quest 2 
they went from, oh, you can jump, duck, swim, to, like, you can swim. Yeah, that's, it's all you need. That's the only thing you can really do. Like, because as they were moving from, like, I mean, not to articulate that, but as they were moving from physical moves and actions you can do into, well, it's inventory driven. It's, it's, but then with Massive Eternity, they just went the fuck in the other direction. Yeah. But also, like, jump was pretty worthless. You only needed it once. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it wasted a lot of time, and it didn't help in any other situation. It only hurt you in other situations. And did Duck ever come up? Uh, Maybe to look in must somewhere? must have. To, just to look at something? Yeah, Maybe. I think you had to duck to reach under a bush at one point. Yeah. But I don't remember if it was something you needed. So I think it, it might was, have been. You know, it was probably just for like one of those pouches of jewels you find around the kingdom. Oh yeah, I think you, you maybe you had to duck to look into like a knot in a hole, like in a tree, like a. Yeah, I forget. I don't know. Um, but uh, so they did pare it down to just swim in King's Quest Two, and then King's Quest Three. Did you automatically swim in King's Quest Three? I, th- I think King's Quest Three, as you walked into the ocean, you just started. Swimming. And they were like, yeah, so this is all inventory based. So, like the concept of the inventory stuff. Mm-hmm. They had been moving towards, but King's Quest Three also was the first real attempt at making this more narrative driven. Like, yeah, like there are sto- It's not just puzzles you have to solve; it's story beats you have to reach before you can do things. It, yeah, because King's Quest One was just go collect all the shit, come back, and I die. King's Quest Two was collect King- this thing. Now collect this thing. King's Quest, now collect this thing. King's Quest 2 was linear in that there's an order you have to get these things in, but it's not like there's a narrative reason for that order other than the next clue is behind this door. Right. And, and then they did, and they had a climax with, like, you gotta go get her, and you have to get home. and like So they started to move towards story there, but King's Quest 3 is really where they were like, what if it was about this mm-hmm. story? And... Then King's Quest IV, they really peaked with the old programming. Like, King's Quest IV, they really... I think the reason they probably had to do King's Quest V next is just because they'd done everything they could do in the programming language. Like, probably. imagine not stepping up the graphics, not stepping up the audio, still using that old programming style, I and mean, topping King's Quest IV. I mean, yeah, they, they, they stepped up the graphics for King's Quest I mean... It might have been a new programming language for King's Quest Four. It was the SCI format, so it was right. So, so new. it was it was a new system, but it was still it was still text parser. It was still, um, you know, sixteen bit or whatever audio. It yeah. was it was still uh, MIDI. I mean, it was greatly improved audio from the previous games. Like it was, like at the time they were promoting it as like, it's it's like it's really orchestrated, which compared to the first three games. Yes, sure. um, but it and was then, still all And beats. King's Quest 1 SCI came between 4 and 5, right? It, uh... Because the graphics that's, are even better in King's Quest 1. That sounds... That sounds right, but I can't remember for certain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because they figured it out in 4, and then they were like, hey, we can go back and do the yeah. early games, and then nobody wanted them to remake the early games anymore, so they stopped. Until, you know, cut to decades later when fans are just remaking the early games in the sure. style of King's Quest VI. Uh-huh. It, but yeah, King's, like, I can't really imagine doing better than King's Quest IV without upping to... Without a major upgrade right, in so resolution and audio and, yeah. King's Quest IV is a more playable game than King's Quest V. Mm-hmm. But King's Quest V is a much better movie than King's Quest IV. <laughs> King's Quest V, beautiful, beautiful artwork, beautiful music for the most part, um, just terrible puzzles and non-professional voice acting. Um, yeah. Unintuitive puzzles. And again, like... Not even unprofessional, just non-professional. They yeah. were not professionals. Like, and, yeah, it, again, it was unintuitive in a way, like... Every King's Quest game up to that point had some level of non-intuitiveness. Every King's Quest game had at least a couple flute on the flowers in there. Um, yeah. But King's Quest V, like, I'm hard-pressed to think of a puzzle that was intuitive. Like, there were, yeah. some, thi- there were some inventory items that it was obvious to figure out how to get, but once you had them, what you had to do with them did not come naturally. And there were some puzzles where it was like, 
I have no way of knowing. It was sort of like the Minotaur killing you in the, the labyrinth and being like, so I have to stop the Minotaur somehow, right? It's like, well, no, you have to have the fucking hole. There were some, there were a lot more of those where it's like, <clears throat> and I went to the inn and they murdered me. And I didn't yeah. have a chance to do anything. In King's Quest V, there's just a whole lot of, I tried this and it didn't work. And I don't know what changed for it to work this time. Yeah. Like I talked about, number one on my most frustrating King's Quest deaths list was uh, dying at the inn. Because it's not that the death itself is so frustrating, it's just that the fact that it makes you think, well, never go in there, yeah. means that you're stuck wandering around. It's so, really not dying in the inn is frustrating. It's once you've died in the inn, avoiding that death is frustrating. Because you don't know, again, you have no idea what changed. There's no clue in that death to tell you, hmm, if only you had saved a mouse. It's not only that there's no clue, it's that they legit don't give you the opportunity to do anything. So you don't know that if you set something up properly, you will have the opportunity to say, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if, if you at least were trapped and there for a minute and able to click items fruitlessly, yeah. then you'd know if I get the right item or do the right thing, I can get out of here. So you'd at least be experimenting with it. But there's nothing to even communicate that you're ever supposed to go in there. And the shit you get from there is stupid. So every time we complain about uh, the hole in the wall room, act, you know, both of the bad puzzles in King's Quest VI revolve around the hole in the wall. Yeah, it's true. That, that just occurred to me. So every time we complain about the hole in the wall subplot, that's with the caveat of these are the only puzzles of this level of frustration in King's Quest VI. Yes. There are other things that it took us a while to figure out, but once we figure it out, we're like... Okay, at least I understand why that makes sense. Totally, totally. And King's Quest VI is also just a more pleasant experience all around. Because again, so King's Quest, yeah, again, King's Quest One, you're just wandering around the span of the kingdom the whole time. There are certain places you have to get access to, but then you just keep coming back to the same kingdom. King's Quest Two, similar, like more linearly, but just wandering around. King's Quest 3 is the first time they really delineated it by location, where it's like, first you have to do everything in the wizard's house, which... Then you do everything on the island. Yeah. Or the land. Yeah, then you do everything... Then you travel over to Daventry. Yeah. Um, King's Quest 4 has some delineation, but it goes back a little more to the... You're mostly spanning the whole land... Yeah, but then there, there are, are a couple offshoots. Yeah, there are a couple of offshoots. Like King's Quest Two, there was only the one offshoot. It was the mm -hmm. epilogue. It was now that you've completed everything in the land, go get your woman. Yeah, I mean King's Quest Two, there were also some rooms that you could only access at specific points, like under the sea or the yes. antique shop. True, but but they weren't like full. They weren't. Rounds. Yeah, yeah. It's not like in King's Quest Four when you're on the island with the peacocks and you can like yeah. walk around the whole island and right. Um, so King's Quest. King's Quest 4 backtracks a little bit, but still has offshoot realms. King's Quest 5 feels like you're just wandering around the same place forever until you figure out how to get out of that place. But then after that, like... You around other places. Yeah. King's Quest 5 is very linear if you know what to do, but good luck figuring out what to do. It's also the least intuitive map. Yeah. Because it's most similar to King's Quest 3. King's Quest 1... Uh, the world is round both ways. If you keep yeah. going up, you'll eventually come up down. If you keep going left, you'll eventually come right. Mm. Uh, King's Quest 2, right and left have distinct have, things. You have a borders. mountain to the right, and there's a, a, an ocean to the left. But up and down is like, you can go around the world. Mm. Um, King's, King's Quest, Quest 3. 3 is the first one that, like, you can't. But you have the magic map Actually, to teleport to places in King's I, Quest 3. I think you can go up and down in King's Quest 3. No, there's a mountain. The Mananan's Mountain is at the top. But you can go around the back of Mananan's Mountain because that's where the Oracle is. Mm, I don't think so. I thought the Oracle is in the Spider Cave, which is to the front and to the right of Mananan's Mountain. I thought it was to the back of Mananan's Mountain. We'll have to look that up. I don't remember for certain. You could say who's right in the, the edit. I, I, I don't think you can. I, I, I don't remember there being a bottom border. I don't remember that either. Maybe you could go. I think you can go around the world up and down, but there's a desert to the left, and there's a... Okay, but regardless, yeah. even if you couldn't, yeah. there was a magic map, yeah. so you could, like, go where you needed to go. Yeah. 
Five is like the one, and four. Did four go up and down? Four, yeah, four you can go around the world north and south. That's what I thought. Yeah, um, yeah, four you can go around although the world. Although th there were some screens, like there, there, there was that, you know, uh, evil forest that you couldn't get around without the axe. So, sure. So there were, some, there were some coordinates where you can't go north and south all the way. But, but it's not like... I'm at the bottom, I have to go all the way to the yeah. top. Like, there's a way to, like... If you're walking on the beach, you can just keep... What, what I'm really trying to get at, the problem with the layout of King's Quest V, the reason it's completely counterintuitive, is it's designed screen to screen like King's Quest One or Two, mm -hmm. where it's like you have all the different screens that are oriented to each other, and mm -hmm. you keep wandering around in them. But there's no magic map like in King's Quest Three. You can't go around the world like in most of the other ones. So if you're at the bottom, the only way to get to the top is to go all the way to the top mm -hmm. and wander all the way through all the other map screens. And you've never had to do that in another King's Quest game. Also, you would, there was always an easier way to do it. Also, Cedric is there. That is true. He, he serves no... He does not help with gameplay at all. Even he, narratively, does he ever help... I mean, narratively, he serves a function, and that function is to keep getting injured and kidnapped. Gotcha, but he never helps. Arguably, he helps by flying in front of Mordak's beam at the very end and taking the hit for you. Sure. So Mordak doesn't kill you right away. Hey. Okay, that's fair. Um, the one time you used getting hurt and injured to your advantage. Yeah. So Cedric's a worthless character and annoying. Because in King's Quest VI, the maps are just smaller. Like, yes. Yeah. And they're linear. Like, even there's my be <clears throat> fork in the road, but it's not like, I'm going to wander every which way. It's like, well, no, there's these are the options you have. Yeah, the, so the impressive thing about King's Quest VI is the way it actually feels a lot vaster than it is. Yes. Um, and again, each island, not counting buildings on the island, like not counting specific tasks on the island, so like not counting the labyrinth, not counting going into individual shops, just outdoors on each island, at max, there's six. six screens. And that's on the Isle of the Crown. Yeah, that's on the Seven. first one. Forgot, you can go around the side of the castle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so seven screens. At max, there's seven screens. Every other island has fewer than that. It still feels like you're exploring an entire world. Part of that is because some of these islands have specific reasons where, like, specific barriers where it's like, you will never be able to cross this, but you see the world expands past in this direction. Yeah. Um, but also just part of that is just, again, we talked about the way this game guides you into, you have to keep going back to certain islands, which is tedious for a speed run, but it helps you feel like you're getting the lay of the land, like as an explorer. Yes. And, and also the fact that you're constantly hopping islands means you don't think about the fact that it's, it's limited. There are times where you're like, okay, I'm sick of seeing the same 20 screens. I can't figure out how to progress. Where the hell do I get to go? Like, I remember we always wanted, we were always hoping to gain passage to places that we were not intended to go. Yeah. So like in chessboard land, we thought if we can get the coal, they'll let us go in chessboard land. No, they don't, they never do. We thought in the winged city or in the sacred isle city, whatever, mm -hmm. If we could, like, beat the labyrinth, they'll let us, like, explore the flying air, which, uh, that didn't even make sense, because we don't have wings, so, yeah. like, too bad our dad didn't give us that magic carpet he got in King's Quest 2. Yeah. Although that, I think, might have vanished when he used it. Probably, I don't remember. Um, that was some bullshit with that genie. Yeah, Isle of the Crown genies are much more useful to their masters than, yeah. than Kalima genies. Um, Kalima genies are basically those, uh... Not vet, what are, it's not a vending machine, but it's like a gumball machine that doesn't give gumballs, where it's like a prize, you put a quarter in oh, yeah, turn like, it, and you don't get to choose your prize, it's just whatever's next, and they show all the prizes you might get, like one and of you those, gotta keep going until you get the one you want. One of those things in front of a supermarket. Yeah, which I don't even know if they have those anymore, that might be a 90s kid thing. They probably still exist, but they probably aren't making new ones. Um, well, actually, the new version of that is those... Uh, arcade games where there's like iPods and shit in there. Yeah, except that those are more like crane games. Yeah. Like, I mean, not functionally, but in terms of purpose, mm -hmm. like, the, uh... Um, the point is... What were we talking about? Um, so... The expansiveness. Okay. Though there's only like seven screens. Yeah, so 
as kids, they were like, oh, we want to get to this place and you can never go there. Then there were other places we just assumed you could never go that it's like, oh, you can go there. But I cannot express to you the disappointment I felt when we finally got through the Isle of the Beast after the labyrinth, you know, did the shield, got through there, got the sickle, and I found out it was one more enclosed screen. I'm like, God damn it! I thought we finally reached an island that we could go ape shit in and just explore to our heart's content. Uh, is Isle of the Beast the smallest? Well, I guess Isle of the Mist is the smallest. Island. Yeah, I was gonna say Isle of the Beast has four screens. Yeah. Isle of Mist has three I can think of. If it doesn't have a fourth, then Isle of Mist is smallest. Uh, I guess it depends on if you count a close-up as another screen. I don't. So, then, yeah. Um, it, uh... Oh, wait, no. I take it back. Mm. It's the Isle of, uh, uh, the Winged Ones, or the uh, the ancient, uh, what the hell is the Sacred the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Well, if you count the Labyrinth, that's the biggest island. But if you but don't, if you're you not don't counting count... buildings, because that's a building, it's two screens. Do you count caves? I would count that as a building, but even if you don't, it's four screens, so it's no longer the smallest, but it's still well, tied okay. for second smallest. If you don't count the cliffs, it's three if you do count the Fuck, beach. forgot about the cliff. Okay, if you count the beach, it is... See, that's the thing, though. It's so segmented. I, I can justify not counting the rest of the cliffs, though. Because, because you skip them once you beat them. Yeah, and, and it scrolls. Like, it's not treating it as, like, here's a new place. It's treating it as, here's part two of this place. So yeah, that's three screens. Okay, so I lied. So yeah, it's... In that case, I'd say Isle of Mist, because that doesn't have any bonus shit. That's like... So we're getting very tedious with our breakdown here, but... And you're not going to use most of this. Yeah, but but the point is, um... This game... This game is the pinnacle of this franchise. Um, and there are... There are things you could argue that King's Quest VII improved on. You could argue, but... Those are mostly subjective things, like... If you like the art style of King's Quest VII better, that's your prerogative. You'd have a hard, you'd be hard pressed to argue it's objectively better. Yeah, I mean, you might be able you might be able to argue the that animation's smoother. The animation's smoother. The faces are clearer. It's I think it's technically the same resolution, but they figured out how to take advantage of the screen resolution to make it feel higher resolution. Yeah. So you could argue those elements are better. Although the thing that the thing that bugs me about the animation of King's Quest Seven mm -hmm. is that um, like they were trying to make it Disney style, which I think is on brand for King's Quest. Like I don't think that was necessarily a wrong choice. Sure. I think the facial consistency is a little off for them to truly get Disney style. I think their facial expressions mm -hmm. get get way off model. I think it feels more like Don Bluth to me than Disney for for better and for worse. Like not off brand. Yeah, I mean, for Sierra, like... Yeah, like, Don Bluth has made a lot of great animated films, like, n no disrespect to him, but it, feel, like, it feels like one of Don Bluth's cheaper productions to me. But the thing that, like, I can actually point to and say, okay, this bugs me, is that they're trying to make them like Disney princesses, but they only gave them uh, three fingers and a thumb. Oh, yeah. Which, again, I get why that happens in animation, but... Especially in a computer game where there's a lot of stuff you're programming. But in princess movies, the princesses always have five fingers. The dwarves, you know, the wacky side characters. That's true. You can you can do, you can do just the four fingers, but the princesses have full hands. So yeah, overall, uh, love this game. Love this game. Love the franchise, even for all its flaws. I'm glad to be celebrating 35 years of this franchise. And that I beat it in 35 minutes! Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying something. Uh, it would have taken a lot. It would, it would have been a lot faster to do a speedrun of King's Quest 1 on its 35th anniversary. Okay, maybe. <laughs> but uh, where's the fun in that? Also, that one, I it, it's that's more of a video game. Yeah. The, it, there would have been more, oh, gotta avoid the wolf, oh, gotta go up here, oh, gotta, like, and the there, typing would have come into play of the typing speed. The, there's just so many fewer steps in King's Quest 1 is really what it comes down to. That's true. Um, but we are happy to be celebrating King's Quest because if not us, then who? <laughs> this is our calling, apparently. All right, uh... If you enjoyed this, uh, do you want to see us 
try more gaming stuff because like that's not really what we do traditionally but it could be translation please don't make us do more gaming stuff no 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 but we will if you insist no i would love to do more gaming stuff because there are there are some games that we grew up with that we would love to revisit in a uh, snarky way yeah the phantom menace game the, the phantom menace game uh bugs bunny lost in time oh bugs bunny lost in time Jeez. uh the the, the toy story 2 oh, video toy game. story 2 was a big one um yeah uh so if yeah if you found this interesting let us know and we can do more of this eventually <laughs> yeah and if you enjoyed it because it's king's quest content and want more of that let us know that as well that's true um there are six other, seven other King's Quest games if you count Mask of Eternity. I, d I don't think we're going to do another speedrun anytime soon. But... Maybe King's Questions. We should do a King's <laughs> Questions one. There we go. There we go. All right. Until next time, uh, this is Dave and Nick signing off.